Good morning, welcome to morning prayer. Going backwards and Good morning, Kendra. Good morning, Gail. John, who is the purple? Assuming you mean bishops. There are three bishops. Uh, Dietschy, Mary Glasspool is there. It's one of the bishops suffrage. I can't remember the name of the other one. Zeta, good morning. All right. All right. Beautiful. I turn my and I sit and open two Philippians three. Another sign for your Monday morning. I don't know what it be. From Jeremiah, Philippians, here it is. Praise the Lord. Do you ever? Did anybody ever tell you that if you were like lost and wondering, and open your Bible and point and then and then read what's there? I feel like that just happened. Morning, Gary. I'll cherish these moments over the next month. Me too. Me too, Gary. Morning, Betty. Already here by your son in law. Exeda. I never tried the open your Bible and then like cast you know cast about and see if see if that's the thing that speaks to you. But maybe the reason it works so well is because the Psalms are kind of in the middle of the Bible, and so if you just randomly open it and it opens to the Psalms, they're kind of universally applicable, I think. Okay. Good morning, Leanne. And just a minute here we're gonna get started uh it is monday and holy week if you can believe it here we are um beginning beginning the most holy week of the year uh for us so glad to be with you uh, on morning prayer glad to see your names morning Dottie. i'm grateful for you too oh thank you As hard as the pandemic has been, it's kind of amazing that I've met people like you through it in a way that I wouldn't have otherwise. Morning, Thomas. Morning, Sherry. Let's go. I've got eight o'clock. Oh, I've got eight o'one. Um, let's go ahead and get started here on page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer. All like all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. We'll say it, Psalm 95 is our invitatory psalm. Psalm 95 can be found on page 724. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness at Meribah and on that day at Massa when they tempted me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, this people are wayward in their hearts, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. We'll say together Psalm 51. Psalm 51. We'll say the whole thing. No, well, yeah, let's just say. Psalm 51 is on page 656. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
12, 1 through 16. A reading from Jeremiah, chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. You will be in the right, O Lord, when I lay charges against you. But let me put my case to you. Why does the way of the guilty prosper? Who, why, do all, why do all who are treacherous thrive? You plant them and they take root. They grow and bring forth fruit. You are near in their mouths, yet far from their hearts. But you, O Lord, know me. You see me and test me. My heart is with you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and set them apart for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn and the grass of every field wither? For the wickedness of those who live in it, the animals and the birds are swept away. And because people said, he is blind to our ways. If you have raced with foot runners and they have wearied you, how will you compete with horses? And if in a safe land you fall down, how will you fare in the thickets of Jordan? For even your kinsfolk and your own family, even they have dealt treacherously with you. They are in full cry after you. Do not believe them, though they speak friendly words to you. I have forsaken my house. I have abandoned my heritage. I have given the beloved of my heart into the hands of her enemies. My heritage has become to me like a lion in the forest. She has lifted up her voice against me. Therefore, I hate her. Is the hyena greedy for my heritage at my command? Are the birds of, all, of prey all around her? Go, assemble all the wild animals. Bring them to devour her. Many shepherds have destroyed my vineyard. They have trampled down my portion. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it a desolation. Desolate, it mourns to me. The whole land is made desolate, but no one lays it to heart. Upon all the bare heights in the desert, spoilers have come, for the sword of the Lord devours from one end of the land to the other. No one shall be safe. They have sown wheat and have reaped thorns. They have tired themselves out, but profit nothing. They shall be ashamed of their harvest because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus says the Lord concerning all my evil neighbors, who touch the heritage that I have given my people Israel to inherit, I am about to pluck them up from their land, and I will pluck up the house of Judah from among them. And after I have plucked them up, I will again have compassion on them, and I will bring them again to their heritage and to their land, every one of them. And then, if they will diligently learn the ways of my people, to swear by my name as the Lord lives, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then they shall be built up in the midst of the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah is on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians, chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh. 
For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as a loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or I have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God and Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed on page 94. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, Great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. It's the 
call it for Monday and Holy Week. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not, went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. I'll continue to pray for Gail. Debbie. Okay, thanks for this Calvary community and all the ways it reaches out into the world. For Debbie, Gail, Kathy, Dash, Jim, Jimmy, and Elizabeth. We pray for Audrey's mother, Gail, a day. We pray for Mary, for healing. We pray for guidance and direction for Colin and Caleb. Taylor, Eric, and Jennifer. Thank you, Linda Gale. Thanks for the many ministries and for Missy. We pray for Al Johnson and family. We pray for me and Missy on our new adventure. We pray for Andy and Aline, for Eric, Sue, Madison, Reese. We pray that Leanne and her mom might have a smooth week ahead. Pray for my upcoming tenure in Christ Church. Thank you, Thomas. We'll conclude with the general thanksgiving on page 101. Pray for Cora, Evelyn, Alley. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you've made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.
Amen. Thanks. Thanks everyone for your prayers, for all your well wishes. It really means a lot to me and to Missy. Um, I feel so lucky to have been a part of the Calvary community for all this time. Thank you for, for praying. Uh, Holy Week has begun. Uh, Vincent asked earlier uh, about the services. There are um, services on Monday, Thursday, uh, and Good Friday, and Easter Vigil at 7 p.m., um, and then also a Good Friday at noon. So um, on Good Friday, there will there will, uh, Stations of the Cross will uh, follow the noon service, um, but not, not the 7 p.m., and then we have the 8 o'clock and 11 Easter services, 8 o'clock in Calvary, still has some sign-up available. 11 o'clock at the Levitt Shell um, is full, so if you have signed up and think you won't be able to make it, please do let uh, Abet, Abet know. Um, anything else to know about this week? Yeah, yeah, a big full week ahead, so... Hope you will. Uh, all of them will be live streamed. Maybe I just said this, um, but you can't. They will also be in-person offerings. So, yes, I'm answering your question, Vincent. Hopefully, hopefully you're hearing my answer. <laughs> um, uh, let me make sure. Is there even song? We'll have morning prayer, I think, as usual. But is there even song on Easter Sunday? That I don't know. I don't think so. But I, I can't. I can't answer that. So let me answer that for you. Let's go to Calvary, Memphis, and let's see what we have on Easter Day. All I am seeing is Easter morning. I would be surprised if, if, let's see, checking the church calendar. Maybe I've missed something. So, so as soon as I say something, then it's going to be wrong. And that there is no, I do not see an even song on that Sunday. So that's all of your Holy Week questions answered. Live to serve, Vincent. Okay. God bless you. It's going to be a beautiful day out there. Hope you get some sunshine. Um, hope you are able to join us for um, the services this week uh, in person or online. Uh, God bless you all.